What's going on everybody? It's Roar YG coming at you with a brand new video and I've been staying up for like the last hour and a half waiting to cover these and it is currently almost two o'clock in the morning so this better be worth it by the time I get this out. So with the jump fest or jump fiesta whatever it's called going on a lot of people are expecting like master rule six news or something like that because it's about the time we usually get that kind of news but so far I don't think anything's been revealed. I think it's still going on actually as I'm covering this. But we did get some new support for some archetypes revealed. Namely, the Teller Knight and Constellar archetypes, I believe, are finally being combined into the Constellar Knights. Or at least they're being able to support each other. So that they're not like... It's not like Teller Knight and then Constellar is often like in the corner just like... Hi. And so I'm going to be covering this new support. I believe they got quite a few new cards to link them together. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So starting off, uh, you're probably going to see that the artwork is kind of like scuffed because it's taken from screen caps and it wasn't like zoomed in or anything. So apologies for that. But starting off, we have Teller Knight Lyra. This is a level four light warrior with 1200 attack and 1600 defense that is always treated as a Constellar card. And you can only use each effect of this card's name each once per turn. If a Teller Knight and or Constellar monster other than Lyra is normal summon to your field, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is summoned, you can add a Teller Knight spell from your deck to your hand. Seems very good for the Teller Knight theme in general. Obviously, you're going to be normal summoning a lot of Teller Knight names because a lot of them have effects just on summon period. And of course, a lot of them become good normal summons because of that. And so being able to not only have that and being able to chain block, but also being able to get an extra rank four material out on the field is going to be really nice, especially now that Constellar Diamond is freed from the list. Also, searching any of these spells seems to be really good because I'm pretty sure they have like a Rota and everything like that. So overall, very consistent card, it looks like. Next up, we have Teller Knight Altea. This is another level four light warrior. I think they're all level four lights or there's just light warriors in general. It has 1700 attack and 1300 defense. It is always treated as a Constellar. You can only use each effect of this card's name once per turn. On summon, you can target cards on the field up to the number of light and dark exceeds monsters you control and destroy them and if a teller knight and or constellar monster other than altea is summoned to your field you can special summon this card from your graveyard also you cannot declare attacks for the rest of the turn except with exceeds monsters this seems pretty neat as well having like in deck or in archetype board breaking a non a non boss monster or on a non extra deck monster for an extra deck focused archetype is pretty interesting i really like that it triggers on summon period like all the other ones so that means that for the first turn that you summon it, like if you summon it from hand or something like that, you get some free board breaking there. But then when you revive it later from its other effect on summon of something else, which again will chain block things like your Lyra or any other important Teller Knight cards, you can not only summon this back, but you'll also be able to pop more cards, which is really nice. Overall, I think this is a very nice card, very solid, probably two of, I'd say. So next up, we have a new Xyz. This is Teller Knight Constellar Cad Caduceus. I want to call it Caduceus. Uh, so it is a rank 4 light spellcaster with 1200 attack and 1650 defense. It requires two or more level 4 monsters, and you can only use each effect of this card's name once per turn. On Xyz Summon, you can target one Teller Knight card and or one Constellar card in your graveyard and add them to your hand. And you can banish a Teller Knight or Constellar monster from your hand or deck, then detach a material from this card. This effect becomes that banished monster's activated effect when that monster is normal summon. Ooh, some very interesting usages here. So not only are you being able to just add any Teller Knight card or Constellar card from your grave to your hand, that includes the back row, but being able to trigger any of your Teller Knight or Constellars on summon effects from your hand or deck without actually having to get it on the board is really cool, honestly. Unfortunately, I do not believe that counts as a monster being summoned, so you don't get to like trigger the effect of Lyra just from uh, triggering the second effect of this. Though to be fair, I don't think that'll matter much unless you know, you're using this to add back the Lyra from your graveyard and then trying to use that. So I don't think that that is like the best usage there. But I do think that this is a really cool series of effects, especially on such an easy to make rank four. I think this is another very good card for the strategy. The final card is Teller Knight Constellar. is a continuous spell card that says you can only activate one card with its name per turn, and you can only use its second effect once per turn. When this card resolves, you can special summon one Teller Knight or Constellar monster from your hand or graveyard. And you can target one Constellar or one Teller Knight or Constellar Exceeds monster you control. Special summon from your extra deck one Teller Knight or Constellar Exceeds monster with a different rank from that monster you control by using it as material. This is treated as an Xyz summon and transfer its materials to the summon monster. Again, this looks like a really nice card for the archetype to have. So it's like a Will of the Salamangre in a sense where you get to special summon anything from your graveyard on resolution of the activation or it can summon from hand as well, which is pretty nice for getting clunky cards out of your hand. But I really like this second effect because you can take things like your um, Caduceus, 
and you can easily just slap a Constellar or Teller Knight Constellar Diamond. Is it is that what it's called? Yeah, Stellar Knight Constellar Diamond. Uh, you can just slap one of those on top of something like your Caduceus or any of your other Teller Knights. What are some of the other Teller Knights? I know they're just kind of okay. Uh, let's see. So we have Dark Teller Knight, blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, honestly, a lot of these are just kind of okay. Not, I mean, Triver is pretty nice. Onyx Key Summon, return all the cards on the field to the hand. That's pretty cool, not gonna lie. I just know a lot of them are just kind of like, just semi-fine uh, cards in general. I feel like Teller and I, I think, enjoys going into other generic rank 4 toolbox cards instead. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. That's just what I can gather from Stellar Knight as a whole. But I think being able to just so easily get out your uh, Stellar Knight can Stellar Diamond off of this is just super powerful. Or just getting off, like getting out anything in general is pretty cool. Especially because it gives you more materials for your things like your Ptolemaeus if you're trying to go for like 7 materials for some reason, or things like that. So what do I think about this support? I can't talk much about the Teller Knight strategy. I just know it was one of those like other decks that you could play during uh, Duelist Alliance format. I think it was because Stella, uh, Constellar Diamond, God, I keep stuttering on the name. Constellar Diamond it was a really good counter to like Burning Abyss and Shadal, and I believe it came out during that time. So I think that was like its main big point of play. I know it's just like one of the most simple archetypes in the game when it comes to like explaining to a new player. I feel like it's always been one of those like, hey, if you're trying to get someone into the game, try the uh, Teller Knight archetype because it's just super simple. It's just all on summon effects and then you can like learn more and add more to it as you get better at the game. I think there are definitely still some issues with the Constellar cards, uh, or at least the Constellar half of the portion uh, because a lot of them are just kind of really bad tr effects trying to go into Xyz monsters and the rest of them are just really big monsters that are just terrible so i feel like this teller knight cards in general are just better to play however you can play some cards that can help with these new cards specifically because they're all treated as constellar cards you can get things like your um one sec your constellar leonis that's a free extra normal summon or maybe not leonis but there's a level four one yeah um constellar apollux you get an additional constellar normal summon you have your constellar sheraton it gets to add a constellar monster from deck to him and of course, none of these are hard ones per turns. I think are how many of the old Teller Knight cards are hard ones per turns? Okay, it looks like they're uh, all hard ones per turns, or at least most of them. So never mind them. But the Constellar cards don't really have many like hard ones per turn clauses on them, so you can probably take advantage of that. But I think the Teller Knight cards in general are just better. Uh, I feel like these are very strong. I feel like. Just being able to have a bunch of extra consistency boosts by adding more back row and everything. And then also having some removal here, that's really nice, you don't have to rely on the Triver. And then obviously being able to just swarm the board with more level 4s to make more rank 4s is awesome. I feel like Caduceus is a really nice card for getting into extra plays. Maybe you'd be able to go into some like Draco future plays here. Because yeah, these are like hard ones per turns and stuff, but you can go into other rank 4s I believe. Like, I don't think anything locks you except for some of the older cards. So I think that these can help you go into some really nice rank 4 plays. And I'm really excited for Teller Knight Constellar for this deck. Because just being able to get a Constellar Diamond out for free without having to go into your main phase 2. Or commit 3 materials to your Ptolemaeus is going to be really handy. I don't know. That's just my opinion though. Let me know yours down in the comments below because that's going to do it for the video. If you liked it, please sure to leave a like as always put this video and the channel into YouTube recommended. And if you like this content and you want to see more like it, I have another review video that's coming out like probably within five minutes of this one then press consider subscribing because we're on our way to 2500 subscribers by the end of 2022 which is approaching very fast it also supports the channel more than anything else and it's absolutely free but once again thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one this is aurora signing off